Hey, what up guys? And welcome to another Warcraft 3 guide by Vibu. And today we're going to be going for a simple, 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 simple build of ghouls for undead. So we already talked about fiends. Now here's a ghoul build. This is very basic, okay? Super basic. It is. I'm sure there might be someone out there that's like, we can do it better than this. This is just basic as shit. It's okay. Super basic. Basically what we're going to do is our first acolyte we make, okay? Just just initially send our ghoul to the, the wood. Send our first three acolytes to the gold mine. And then our first acolyte we build is going to literally build a crypt and altar of darkness and then go mine the gold. And then we're going to make we're going to have two acolytes be made, so we're going to go to a total of 5. And as soon as you can afford it, make a ziggurat. As soon as you can afford it again, we can make a second ziggurat, because we're going to make it anyways soon, so fucking might as well right now. And then, as soon as you can afford it, after you make a ghoul, make a Tomb of Relics. It's going to be really close if we just made it right now, though. Essentially, if you make a Tomb of Relics right as you start your hero, you're fine. Uh, we can, we can afford it, so we can make it right now. Yeah, we're good. Now, there's the whole build. Literally, two ziggurats, altar, crypt, Tomb of Relics. That's it. This is it. What are we going to do with this? We have the option to go, I would say, for ghouls, you can really make any hero, but I think Dreadlord pairs with ghouls the best. Uh, it pairs really, really, really well with a ghoul build. You can make, honestly, any hero with ghouls, though. I would say Lich is probably the weakest out of all of them, because Lich has the kind of the, le the least amount of staying power for a first hero. Lich is an amazing second hero, like support, but for first hero, the other three are kind of better, and I would say Dreadlord just, again, goes best with ghouls. My recommendation is is a Dreadlord. <clears throat> and then normally with this build, I will just throw it out there and quickly say, normally this build is best if you expand with it fast, like a quick, just like a fast expand Dreadlord opener. But for the purpose of just making this super simple and really basic entry, let's not worry about that. Let's not expand. Let's just worry about understanding like what other things are good about a, a Dreadlord ghoul build. So now that we are, what is it now? our heroes out, our our tomb relics is done. We buy a rod of necromancy. We can grab this last ghoul. So we push with five ghouls, and our dreadlord. Let's go ahead and take our building here and rally it back to the trees, so I can keep mining wood and I can just keep periodically making ghouls. And I'll I'll tech. I'm gonna actually speed my tech all the way to uh, max really fast now, like all the way to tier three. So we just prioritize our tech. We're creeping the middle. You can throw out some skeleton rods. Every time you get a corpse, you can make a skeleton out of it. It does have a cooldown, so you can't constantly spam it. And every time we go to a new camp here, let's fight something bigger. Let's just throw a sleep at the big boy. Make creeping really easy. We kind of just green box. Oh, we went green box, but we just like right clicked back here. And then once our army got kind of like in the area really well, we then A move it. Same thing like right there. I run by it, so my units all get around it. And then I attack it. And so on and so on. I'll do the same thing over here. Let's go for a vampiric or a second. This is super basic creeping. So we can go over here. Sleep the big boy right now. A move the ground. Good shit. We can go ahead and uh, take a, another ziggurat now. And let's go and take a graveyard at this point. This will give us upgrades. Go ahead and attack the big boy. Yep. And now let's go ahead and kill one more little wave here. Let's go do the same exact thing again. Let's sleep the big boy. A move him with everything. And we're still making ghouls in the main base. So we're just leveling the hero. That's all we're doing. Leveling our hero. And sleep and vampiric are makes it really easy to creep with this hero. Now we got level 3. So let's get level 2 sleep. We have level 1 vampiric are. We'll pop our last rod of necromancy. And we're going to go to something a little bit more challenging now because we have level 2 sleep, which is better. So now we're going to go and head and uh, we're going to go ahead and sleep the big boys here. And we're just going to let our shit kill everything else. We'll sleep the other big boy. And this creep camp just became fucking like ridiculously easy. Let's go and grab the ghoul that's getting attacked. Run him away for a second. You can either do it on the screen itself or through the command group in the bottom where you can see the, the red health. 
Okay. And now let's go ahead and wake up one of the big boys. Start killing him. And now my, you can see my tier two is done. Immediately go tier three. Immediately. Which is also why we rally our ghouls on the wood again, so we can actually have wood to be able to attack with. And same thing again. Kill this big boy. Start getting upgrades once our graveyard's done. And we can also spend our next bit of resources on getting another hero. Which is going to be very soon. So uh, another hero to pair really well with this, I would say a good second hero if you go Drill Lord first, would be Death Knight second. It gives you the aura and it allows you to heal yourself. And now we can take a ghoul and we can go scout around the spawn locations to find our opponent. While we just kind of chill for a second. Maybe we can even creep this while we were scouting with our ghouls or whatever. Just to find out where my opponent is, because we haven't even scouted where he is yet. You could scout with your skeleton rods really as well, like send like one skeleton out here and there. You could do that too, but uh, it's okay. Doing this as well at some point is fine. So is he here? No, he's not there. Is he here? Yes, he is there. We found him. Okay, so he is in the uh, the middle, or the bottom middle, so it's fine. It's an orc as well. Let's go ahead and get another... Uh, Ziggurat, and this time as well, let's start actually make a slaughterhouse too now. Keep getting upgrades. Make sure those are make sure that your upgrades are like flowing the whole time. And we're gonna pick this item up with our Death Knight, and we'll go back to our base just for a second now. What we can do now is we can like head back to our base just for a second. We can get ready to buy a Orb of Corruption. We can also get ready to, uh, we can we can creep out our expansion just so we could have it later. But again, our priority in this game has been really quick teching ghoul opener with, uh, and there you go, pick that item up. We've done a really quick tech ghoul opener that goes to tier three and uh, has upgrades involved with it. This is gonna go really, really, really easy into abominations right after this. This is like a super basic version of like a melee tanking build for undead. We can throw another sleep, add something strong over here, like one of these axe throwers. Creep this out. And now you can see I am uh, tier three. Let's go ahead and do a couple things now. Let's get another melee upgrade. Let's get a gas upgrade for abominations. And let's get a frenzy upgrade for ghouls. Now let's also just finish creeping this. And let's go back to my base. And let's do something really quick. Let's go back to my base now and let's uh, go ahead and get an orb of corruption and maybe like uh, either uh, like a healing item of some sort, a healing scroll or a healing pot. I'm probably going to pick a healing scroll. And we're going to leave. We also leave like three ghouls on our, uh, we leave like three ghouls on our um, wood the whole time. And while we're waiting just for a second for like the abominations to start, we can, we can still creep. We can like grab some ghouls that are healthy with our heroes. But now our, our army, as soon as ghoul, the Unholy Frenzy is done, this ghoul upgrade we just got, ghouls just went from like a 3 out of 10 in terms of how useful they are to like a 7 out of 10. Like they're so much fucking better now. That item, or that, that not item, that upgrade is fucking insane. Because it's like basically having adrenal glands on Zerglings with metabolic boost at the same time. It makes them not only move faster, but attack faster. It's fucking insanely good. It, it alters the unit so much and how effective it is. We can go ahead and make another Ziggurat, because we can afford it. We just keep sleeping the big boy here. And now big boy's all that's left, so let's go ahead and kill it. Grab the ghoul out that's getting focus fired. We can shift click this one and grab that out It's getting focus fired. And good shit. And now finally we're getting abominations. So now I would say this is a great time where you can go attack now. Up until this point, it would have been not the greatest idea to attack him because you're really weak. Up until you have shitty poopy diaper abomination units. And also until you have ghoul frenzy. The, the holy frenzy for ghouls. Before that, this build is very, very, very weak. But now once you have this, this just had like a humongous power spike and now you're super strong. So what we're going to do now is we're no longer going to make any more ghouls. Ghouls are kind of just done. Eventually we're going to have pure abominations. But now we're just going to use ghouls that have movement speed to actually go do some fucking damage. And the ghouls that now mine the wood now mine super fast in my base for like the three that we leave there. So they mine super, super quick wood, which 
It basically means we're never gonna have another. We're never going to have another wood problem forever. And also, our, our heroes are pretty high level too. It's it's pretty respectable. I have a four and a two. That's not bad. What is it now? So at this point now, I'm just rallying my my slaughterhouse to my heroes, and that's it. So every time I make an abomination, it walks over towards my dreadlord. What is it now? Let's go ahead and look for a fight. All we're going to do now is we're going to do the same thing we did to the creeps. We're going to sleep big units, whether that be a hero or whether that be his melee units. Now, out of this army, nothing's really scary here except for the Blade Master. So I'm going to sleep the Blade Master repeatedly. If he had, like, Torrent, I might sleep those too. Or, like, if he had Wyvern I would, or Wind Riders, I might sleep those as well. But I can just spam sleeps on the, on the Blade Master over and over and over and over and over and over. Like, I, I just lay, wait till he wakes up and then immediately sleep him again. It's insta-cast, so you can't do that. I can bring our Abomination Poopy Diaper Boys over here to help sleep him again. Okay, this is a little bit more hard to figure out which one is which. So, let me explain right now really quick how you can figure out what Blade Master is the real one. One way you can figure out is which unit takes real damage. And you can see my ghoul just took damage from that one, so we know that's the real Blade Master. Another way to figure it out is that Blade Master itself takes way less damage than an image. So if I smack an image and he gets fucking chunked by something that should not chunk him as hard, that's an image. Whereas if I attack the Blade Master with, you know, this unit, and if he does not get chunked nearly as hard, you can see he barely moved in health. Then we know which one's the real Blade Master. So we can sleep the real one, and we're good to go. Most people won't get Mirror Image. Most people will get Windwalk and Crit. But whatever. You get the point. And then now, you know, if you find yourself in a situation where you're getting a lot of uh, gold with this, you can do something like throw down an expansion. You could throw down a second slaughterhouse. Which allows you to make abominations at a faster pace. You could also do something like uh, make another hero. We could get like a lich now or something, whatever. Get a third hero if you wanted to. Death Coil or a ghoul that's taking damage. And then we're going, for this build too, what we're doing mainly is we're going into, uh, for the Dreadlord, we go sleep, aura, sleep, aura, sleep, and then ultimate. For the uh, for the Death Knight, we go coil, aura, coil, aura, coil. And then it's really up to you if you want to get the ultimate or you want to get coil again. Or, uh, sorry, uh, aura for the third time again. Probably just get the ultimate. Just make it easy. And then we can sleep the hero once again. Whenever there's other enemy units around, we can just keep sleeping the hero. That's actually an image I slept. I didn't notice. And then if you ever get in a situation too where you're like, all right, my units are all kind of low. Everyone's taking a bit of damage. This is why we bought the healing scroll. Just use it right here when you're all stacked up and suddenly everything gets like super healed again. Makes your life really easy once again. Alright, and uh, now, uh, now we have, uh, you know, our, our second slaughterhouse is done. We have good upgrades. We're about to be three, three upgrades on our ground units. We have an expansion that's about done. If you do expand, you can always make more acolytes for it. You don't have to just leave, obviously don't put one on it. You can make a couple more, four more to go to a total of five to go on it. But now we can just be like, cool, now we're just going to make abominations two at a time. And our army could literally just become mass abominations now at this point. And every time a ghoul dies, it just dies. It's gone. It gets replaced by abominations. As long as you maintain three here, you never have to remake ghouls again. The only time ghouls are really relevant to make, once you get to the point when you have like three, three abominations, is if you ever think to yourself, your opponent doesn't have a really strong army, and you have more than enough to overpower him already, and you really want to just like sleep his units and run your ghouls over there to surround him and kill him. Because ghouls are really good at chasing someone down and surrounding and killing them. And the way you would do that is your, the way you micro ghouls. You do the same thing with all units, but ghouls do this the, the fastest. If you have them selected, you can run past the target. And as soon as you run past the target, spam move command on the target you're looking at. And then click, move, click, move, click. So it's right click to move past. M, left click, M, left click, M, left click, M, left click. And you can actually surround the target like that. And if you do that... If you do it just once, once might work most of the time, but like look how it kind of just like stops on the outside. So if you do it twice, they condense a little bit more. Sometimes units kind of path block each other, so it might be something like this where they're path blocking. 
in a way where now the hero can still run out like that. But if you move command, if you spam like a th two, like three or four times, move click, move click, move click, move click, they will all keep re-shooting, re get on the target, get on the target, get on the target, get on the target, and you can actually surround the target entirely. And now if the hero is surrounded, he can literally not get out of there. And ghouls with level three melee can beat the shit out of a target really fast. It's crazy. And even crazier than that, if you do it to a target that also is now getting hit by a corruption orb, it's fucking crazy. Like, watch this. I'll give the corruption orb to my lich now because it's a range unit. And I will shoot the abomination with the corruption orb. And this thing has level three armor, by the way. But I will shoot the corruption orb on the abomination and it will lose a shitload of armor because of that's how this orb works. It Whatever gets attacked by the hero, that unit loses armor. But watch how fast ghouls will beat the shit out of this abomination because of this orb effect. It's insane. So you move command, move command, move command. But you like move one up there to get on top of it. And it just chunks like fucking crazy. So ghouls are really good at just like dumpstering heroes. Like you can do, uh, we can experiment on a hero again over here too. Why not? We'll do it to our, uh, fuck, we'll do it to our Dreadlord again. Level five hero. A level five hero. Just get on top of it. Move command on top of him. Attack his ass. And he literally just died. You get fucking chunked like crazy when you, uh, when you, like, this is what the strategy all is. It's pretty much what it is. As long as you have ghouls, it's really effective to sleep surround stuff, get on top of them, and then kill them. And once you get to the abomination side of things, surrounding isn't necessarily as big of a deal. Now it's just a big front line that you have. You're, you're more brute force. And then finally, the last way this build can transition in a really, really effective way, if, like, let's just say you have a lot of money and you're keeping your upkeep. This is the final thing we'll talk about, too, about upkeep. This build, in my opinion, ideally what you should do is you should keep your upkeep all the way to 80. Like, when you're going ghoul style, keep it below 50. As soon as you switch into abominations, go from 50 to 80. And then as soon as you have, like, you know, we're, still, we're talking, you have, like, 2,000 gold at, uh, you have 2,000 gold, like, in the bank. You Let's say you've lost all your ghouls and you still have, like, 8 abominations or, like, 10 abominations or something. 9 abominations with your army. What you can do then is you can now switch, and you're 3-3 three, three as well with the ground army upgrades. You can go back to your base. You can build a sacrificial pit. You can supply uh, your ziggurat max all the way to 100. And you can go in from a sacrificial pit to a like double boneyard uh, tech transition. And you can make, you can wait for these to finish obviously. And then you can just have abomination with heroes and you can go into, and also here's another thing too. Uh, I, gotta, I, I, keep, I know I keep bouncing around how I'm saying this, but Essentially, what the build does, I, let me just start over because I'll make it sound way easier. Ghouls with a Dreadlord turns into Dreadlord plus Death Knight with now Abominations. Turns into now add a Lich to that as well and then tech switch into Frostworms. And your army can switch into Ghouls and do Abominations and Ghouls and then it becomes just Abominations. And then it goes Abominations plus Frostworms. And then if the game somehow still doesn't end then, you can just become pure Frostworms. It's just it's it, it just text from ghoul abomination frostworm. That's all it is. So we go three three ground all the way, and then once you get three three ground all the way, you start getting range weapon upgrades, and you start getting ready to go into frostworms. If you need to keep making abominations, you totally can. Having one in your army is always not a bad idea. It's very very nice. And then uh, finally, the last thing is, once you get a lich, it's always a good idea as well in my opinion. Especially if you're going to start going into more Abomination heavy and more Frostworm heavy, which is when you have the Lich. Make like two statues. And you can actually do uh, what you can do with them. I'll show you how you can kind of play it out. Uh, also, let's just let's just kill our ghouls. Let's let's pretend that the ghouls died. Or I'll just, I'll just feed it to my opponent. I don't care. I'll just feed it to the AI. Go kill my ghouls. I'll just shift move command it all over his base. And let them all die. Yeah, kill them all! Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so these ghouls should be walking basically until the point when they're dead. Now, uh... Okay, go back to my base. So we have level, uh, level 2 air weapons being started. We're going to level 3 in a second. Um, we can have frost rooms start to be made, like right now. Make sure you catch your ghouls if they ever stop mining wood. If they like run out of trees to mine, you gotta really fix that, which kind of happened just now. But we can start making frostworms. 
And what you can do with your statues is you can right click, both, like, have them both selected. You can right click healing on one of them. You can manually select just one of them. Click the opposite. So now one of them heals health, one of them heals mana. Take them both and just right click your lich. And now what will happen is every time they're next to the lich, they'll just they'll they'll always follow his ass. And whenever your army comes to a stop or whenever there's like a bit of a traffic jam where the statues kind of stop, they'll use their abilities just like that. And they'll always stay in your army. They don't have to be hotkeyed. They just fucking easily follow you. It's the most easy way to use this statue unit that will always give you regen that you don't it requires like literally no APM from you. So again, if and now we're at we're, we're at this stage where we have good weapon upgrades, we're going into frost rooms. You can keep. I would say a good number to have would be like maybe five abominations with your heroes. Maybe five, maybe six. Five or six would be great. And then just frost rooms. And then if if you get to a point where your opponent has no reason for you to have abominations anymore, like they have mass error or whatever, or if you're in a team game and they don't really have a lot of ground units that you need to tank against, or if, if you just feel like. The Frost Room DPS is way better for you right now because maybe they have a lot of abominations as well, or maybe they have a lot of uh, torrent or knights or something like that. Magic damage from a Frost Room is fucking insane. This is why we get the weapon upgrade because now it's about to upgrade again. If you have the weapon upgrade for a Frost Room, you can obliterate heavy armor units like an abomination. And if I had like seven Frost Rooms right now, I could like one shot an abomination essentially. So it's insane. It's fucking insane. It's a great way to play the game out, like to, to take you to like late later stages of the game. So this is the final top tier tech transition of this build is you eventually go into frost rooms. But if you do eventually want to switch into full frost room, like I said before, keep one abomination in your army, just one. And the reason why is because this stinky ass diaper shit, it, it's a debuff that applies to a unit that lasts for 90 fucking seconds. And it did it degenerates their health by two hit points a second. It's it's like plague and brood war. It just it doesn't it's not as crazy as plague and brood war, but it's similar. It just poisons your ass for damage over time for a minute and a half. And every time the abomination does this, if it just does a fucking crop dust where it's like and it walks by, well you just reapplied the dot. All it has to do is be in the area. This thing is like constantly shitting its pants, and as long as something else smells that, it gets the debuff, ref like refreshed for a full 90 seconds again. So it, and it cannot be dispelled either. So it lasts for fucking ever, and it just, it just slowly like decays your opponent's army. So having one in your army is great just for the debuff. But otherwise, you can have just like mass frost rooms, and that's fine. Uh, and it, it like synergizes well with this build too, because your, your abomination would be fully buffed as well. Uh, and yeah, then again, like I said, it would just eventually be go to... You could literally go all the way to 100 supply if you wanted to, which is mass frost rooms, and that would be great. And as you can see, look at the level 3 frost room... Uh, you know, damage. Uh, I think the, the this is the ground one, I believe. And this is the air one. They they both hit hard as fuck, but I'm pretty sure the ground one is first. You guys can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong on that. Someone who knows more about Warcraft 3 than I do. I'm pretty sure the first one is ground. The second one is its anti-air attack. Uh, but yeah, Frost Worm is super, super, super strong as fuck. If you're, if you're new to the Warcraft 3 and you have an army of Frost Worms that is well upgraded like this, you will probably crush your opponent. Like it's, it's, it's very effective. It's super good. It's a very strong, well-rounded unit. It's like mass battle cruisers or mass carriers in StarCraft. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole build. That's really how it goes. The last thing I kind of didn't touch on was the Lich. The way we would do the Lich would be you would go for Nova armor, Nova armor, Nova ultimate. That's how you would want to level them up. You want so you want to prioritize Nova. You want to prioritize sleep, and you want to prioritize death coil. And the last thing we can talk about, this is going to be a little bit more advanced now uh, over what you really need to do. If you ever got to a point in the game where now you were like, okay, well, I haven't won the game yet. I still haven't won the game yet. And let's say your heroes are all like five plus and you have a lot of frost worms and you're just, you're at that stage now. What you could do with your Dreadlord at this, at this stage of the game would be, you could actually go over to a goblin merchant just like this. You could buy a Tome of Retraining. Because now if you're not going to be going for Sleep Surrounds with Ghouls anymore, and if you're really not going for Abomination Heavy anymore either, you can go for, you can change your course of how you play the build. And instead of going for Control, which is what Sleep is, you could hit Retrain and you could go all the way to Full Carrion Swarm. And you could, you could get Sleep as well. Because especially if you have statues, you could go Sleep and Carrion Swarm now. And just straight up drop 
vampiric aura all together. And now what you could do is you could uh, you could now have a burst with control aspect to it. Now that your heroes are higher level, it has a higher mana pool. It has more regeneration because it has more intelligence. You have statues, which gives you shitloads of regen. And you can go to a coil Nova Carrion Swarm combo, just like I showed you guys in the Fiend video for Undead, uh, for the other Undead build. So now we have a burst style build. And then you could also still sleep shit. Like if there was a hero, you could like burst it and then sleep it. Or you could sleep one hero, burst another, whatever you want to do with it. And just be creative. Try and like burst shit out. Uh, and so on and so on. And if you have, again, if you have frost worms, that is the in game. That is like the in tier unit you can, you can really go for. And that will help you burst like fucking crazy to just, you know, obliterating units that you're fighting against. So if we get to up here and we see like a blade master, I'll throw a burst at him and he'll probably just fucking insta die. Okay, here, here, it's obviously it's level one hero, so it's gonna definitely die pretty fast, but just watch the burst again. We're here, we're going to attack him, coil, Nova. Oh. Jesus. Okay, I actually like hit spacebar. Oops, my bad. Uh, but you get the point. It's fucking crazy effective. And then if you get level six, uh, level six on Dreadlord is massive. You can definitely just, you know, it's called Infernal. You can use it. You can drop an Infernal on their army. This, this circle is basically the radius of what it lands on. And anything it lands on takes initial impact damage of 50. And then it stuns them for four seconds. The 50 damage is kind of whatever. It also drops damage in terms of the once the Infernal lands, it does immolation around it. It has permanent immolation, which will burn for like probably another 40 damage or something over the course of the stun. That damage is kind of meh, but the stun effect is fucking huge. That's like two volleys of, out of your hero. So as you can see, and it's huge. It does all units. So check this out. It's massive fucking damage. You can throw out your AOE on top of the on top of the army and stuff like that. And if you're like, oh, I didn't kill the hero yet, let's sleep his ass. So much utility with your Dreadlord at this point in time. And then if you're ready to burst his ass out, you can just be like, alright, I'm ready to kill the, the Blade Master, Coil, uh, your Coil, Nova Carrion Swarm. Just fucking dead. And again, the way I micro that was C, click, tab, C, click, tab, in, click, because it's C for Carrion Swarm, C for Death Coil, in for Nova. You can customize these hotkeys in the future when you get more advanced in this game, but for now I would recommend just probably just using basic shit. Make your life easy. Like, don't make it super confusing, but the it has to be. And yeah, the, this army, at well, this stage is insane. The, the, the burst damage is, is ridiculous. I can just like one-shot everything. Like, watch this hero once again just in instantly die. Coil, Nova, Carrion Swarm, insta-fucking dead. Kill the, bu the burrow, insta-dead. Everything is fucking insta-dead. So, at this stage, you're strong as hell. So we're not saying ghouls all game. Ghouls is again just the opener of this build. And it pairs well with a really fast level Dreadlord and you know control with sleeps and shit like that. And yeah, that's basically it for the Dreadlord guide, guys. I hope this helps you understand the other version of Undead a little bit better. And a little bit of a disclaimer as well, really quickly, that the last thing I'll say. Just because this is relevant. If you get good with this build, if you're like, you know, I like this style. This suits the way I like to play more. I want to, I definitely want to do this style, whatever. This build suits expand. It, it, sorry, I'm talking away from the mic. This build suits expansions way more than uh, the way, what, how I did it this game. This game, I just literally rush tech. And I would definitely recommend starting this way. Definitely start by rushing your tech. But if you start getting better with this build, a better way to play it out, honestly, would be open with a Dreadlord Ghouls, just like I did, but instead of just rushing tier two right away on your uh, your main building, your town hall, get a, ex like literally creep your expansion out first and you can make at least one, if not five acolytes extra out of your main base to go saturate your natural. Otherwise, if you make one, if you just want to make the one acolyte, that's also fine and you can tech faster after you do it. But if you make the one, come over here and build a necropolis and you can build like a couple towers at it too. And then you can also expand. Another item that is super useful to expand with, if you're, if you're going to go for the expansion route, is this item called a Sacrificial Skull. Because what it does... I just want to explain this because it, this is very relevant to this build. What the Sacrificial Skull does is if you... Let's just say, hypothetically, we're running over here to go creep and expansion. Let's say there's a gold mine like right here. What we can do with the Sacrificial Skull is you can click it. It puts a circle just like the Infernal in our inventory. We click the ground where it is. It spawns Blight there which now allows us to build buildings on it. So I can literally yes. st set up an expansion just like that by going ziggurat, ziggurat, necropolis, and then a gold mine, if there was a gold mine here. 
Because otherwise, if you don't buy that building, the only thing you can build is you can build an Acropolis and a gold mine. And neither one of them spawn creep initially, or blight rather. Neither one of them spawn blight right away until the buildings are done. And if you get attacked in the time it would take you, like in the time it would take for this to finish, you kind of miss out on the opportunity to have towers to guard yourself. And towers are insanely important in Warcraft 3 when you want to go for expansions uh, because they make your life a thousand times easier actually defending it. Towers are, in, in, towers are insane. Think of like, for people who know StarCraft, because I know that's where a lot of my audience is, one tower in Warcraft 3 is like the equivalent of having like three spine crawlers summon, or like two bunkers or like three summon photon cannons. It's, it's, a, it's very fucking effective. It's so ridiculously strong. But Blight, the, the, the ziggurats cannot be built unless they're spilled on Blight because as you can see, if there's no Blight, which is why we buy the Sacrificial Skull. The Sacrificial Skull is literally to make ziggurats at the same time as we make the Necropolis and also the gold mine. That is the only reason why we get the Sacrificial Skull. And if again, if you want to make one Acolyte and then tech your, tech your main, make a Necropolis as well. If you want to make five Acolytes and just make a couple towers at it, it's a bit more of a risky expansion, and, but you could do that and then just make five extra Acolytes, tech a little later, and uh, go from there. And I would say as well, if you're, if you're actually going to make towers, if you are going to make towers and you're going to make ziggurats and shit, uh, and you're going to expand really fast, Instead of three, like I said before, three is what I told you guys for the undead build that was fiends, that text really fast, it saves one base, that's more standard. Three was fine for this build initially because we text really fast again with the ghoul build. But if you're gonna expand, you should go to like four. Go to like four ghouls on wood, and that would be great because it's gonna be enough wood, it's gonna be that fourth ghoul is gonna be enough to like afford the extra costs of the extra things like having a tower, having a gold mine, uh, while also being able to tech relatively fast and maintain the rest of your build. So the extra goal is going to just mine the extra wood for you. That's going to make the difference to, be able to make it work. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole build, guys. That's that's really all it, how, how it goes. This build could, like, again, all these builds I, that I teach you guys in, uh, 1B, or in, in these guides, these tutorial guides, they're super basic, but they can apply to 1v1 and 2v2 and 3v3 and 4v4 and free-for-all. The, the whole game. Just to get a basic understanding of the game, you can use this build with your friends, with teammates, or by yourself in 1v1. So just know that it applies in everything. Uh, it's just like a, it's like a sequence of how the build goes. Um, and then finally, the last thing we didn't really touch on. The way this build would go, again, I would say, obviously, all items initially... We're, the, we're talking about item allocation. All items initially go on your Dreadlord, because your Dreadlord's your first hero, obviously. So you pick up everything on him. Leave DPS unit, leave leave your DPS items on your Dreadlord when you make your Death Knight, and then put all defensive items on the Death Knight. And then finally, um, once you have the Lich, rotate all of your DPS items that you have onto the Lich, or you can leave it on your Dreadlord. Either way, I I think it's honestly fine. But leave all your uh, if you have if you have too for instance if you have too many protection items, maybe put a lot of them on your Death Knight and put some of them back on your Dreadlord now. And if you have too many DPS items, put a lot of them on your Lich and put some of them back on your Dreadlord. So Lich is the priority of damage. Death Knight is the priority of armor. And Dreadlord is kind of the left the leftovers again, just like the other undead build with fiends. Dreadlord is the initial and he's the leftover. But he's he does have a phase in the game where he is the DPS until your Lich is up. But if you never change it and he just stays DPS all game, it's okay. Because a high level Dreadlord doing DPS is not a bad thing. It's just Lich is kind of better overall because he always gets more damage off because he's ranged, so he's not getting path blocked by abominations and shit. So if I wanted to do it perfect, this would, in my opinion, this would be kind of perfect. Maybe even put that health of re health uh, stone on the, the Death Knight, and this would be, I would say, like perfect. Dreadlord could have like a, a healing or a, a, a TP scroll or whatever, and you could get more items and fill out your heroes even more. If you don't have any more items, but you have a lot of gold, you could always buy items off of a shop. Uh, and so on and so on. But yeah, Lich, definitely good for damage. Death Knight, definitely good for armor. And then Dreadlord is kind of the excess. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's pretty much it. And that's kind of how it goes, boys. That's really, that, that is literally it. That is the, the whole build. It's kind of the end of it. And I guess we'll just use the, the, the last of our army now to just go, you know, kill some shit. Might as well.
And now you can see what it looks like in full fucking action here. I must so now what we're going to do again is we're going to burst damage crucial targets. And we're going to disable targets that are annoying that I can't burst immediately. So I'll, I'll burst out the Shadow Hunter and I'll disable the Blade Master. So disable the Blade Master, drop a Golem, Coil, Nova, Carrion Swarm, just burst in the Lich. And now I'm literally fucking A moving. And everything just dies immediately because these are heavy armor units versus Frostworms, which is really bad for the for, for the uh, for the heavy armor unit. We can burst on the Blade Master now because he's by himself. We just popped our Book of the Dead by literally clicking it in our inventory. And, yep, there you go. There's the whole, there's all of it. That's it. So that, you know, obviously the, the, the heroes on the orc were really low, but you get the point. That's kind of what you'd want to go for. And this army has good mobility as well, just because of the, the Death Knight having a unholy aura, which increases, which is one of only two auras in this game that increase your uh, movement speed. Okay, so we just nuked the fuck out of that hero again. We could get level 3 sleep. We could get uh, the ultimate for a death knight. And we could, you know, eventually, once we get level 6 on Lich, we'll get Nova again at level 5. But then we'll get Death Decay at level 6. And then we just go to the next base and so on and so on. Just keep keep doing the process. Also, if you ever run into a situation, here's, a, here's, here's something to say too that might be relevant. If you ever run into a situation where you're like, vibe, okay, I have more Frostworms, but my control group is full. If this ever happens to you, take out an abomination and put in a frost room in the control group instead. So you replace it. And then the abomination you take out of your control group, you can put it in like group two. Just put it in group two. So you can be like 1A, 2A, click. 1A, click, 2A, click. So now I have abominations just kind of like by themselves in another group. Uh, if you run out. Same, th same thing can be said about uh, abominations. When you have the ghouls and uh, abominations, if you ever have too many units... Ghouls should all be in group 1, and Abominations could be by themselves in group 2, and the reason why is because all the Abomination does is it just fucking A-moves. You don't really give a shit about where it goes, it just kind of runs around. But you want to surround shit when you have the Ghoul phase, and you want to focus fire shit when you're in the Frostworm phase. So these units need to actually be microed a lot more. 2, if Abominations are excess on 2, you can just let it A-move them, and call it a day. And if you're wondering why why would you, if, you if, if that's how that works, why would you ever put them in group 1 as well? Because it makes it easy. If your abomination ever takes damage, you can grab it through your control group down here. If it's a, if it's like fucking a mess on the screen and it's really hard to click it on the screen and it's just it's chaotic and you're like I can't fucking click him on the screen. You can use your death knight to death coil from the control group on the bottom and heal the abomination on the bottom of the screen. So you can actually use your spells on the bottom here defensively. So it makes it easy to heal your shit if, just because. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it, guys. That's really how the build works. There, there's a ghoul build for you. That's kind of how it goes. And yeah, if you watch this video and you're like, okay, that was that was a lot of information really fast. It might have been too quickly for me. Uh, you know, maybe I, I want to learn more about the game. Maybe I didn't learn. Like, I'll just say this. This was specific to the ghoul build about how it rotates and transitions throughout the game. And it was definitely a lot of information there. I totally agree. You can always watch it again if you feel like it was too fast because this was kind of a crash course on ghouls. But if if you want to know a lot more about the game as a whole, if you want to be like, I need a, like an overall Warcraft 3 crash course, I did that in the Undead Fiend video. And I'm going to say this for every single video I make, for the Orc videos, for the Night Elf videos, for the Human videos. I'm always going to reference you to go watch the later half or just straight up watch, if you want a really good crash course of Warcraft 3, watch the whole video of the Fiend video of Undead. Because I think Fiends are probably one of the easiest units to learn the game on. Because they're very versatile. They're just fucking strong units. They're overall good. It teaches you how to micro. It teaches you everything. Like, it's just a, a solid unit to learn on. And uh, I did a very thorough Work of 3 analysis on, like, learning the game on that Fiend video. So I highly recommend going and watching that for shitloads of Work of 3 information if you haven't watched it already. If you're brand new to the game. Or if you just don't know what's going on. And, yeah. Uh, otherwise... Go check that out if you want to. Otherwise, thank you for watching this one. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I haven't decided which one it'll be yet. But whatever it is, I'll see you then. Until then, take it easy, guys. Much love. And uh, peace out.